Welcome to 3 Minute Retro and today we're going to talk about the Acorn Electron and the Acorn Electron is a much derided machine and not because it's not any good but because of the delays that were behind the model's release and also it's kind of slightly lacklustre performance and that lacklustre performance was down to a want or a need to build a computer for under £200 to compete with the likes of the ZX Spectrum, the Auric Atmos, the Dragon 32 and a whole host of other micros that were out at the time. The Acorn Electron is basically a cut down BBC micro. It's partly compatible with it and Chris Curry wanted to produce a machine to compete with the aforementioned Spectrum which was its main threat. But sadly the Electron failed. It failed because of production problems related to the large ULA, uncommitted logic array, at the heart of the Electron. This chip took over many of the features and functions of the original BBC Micro. But the problem with that was that it slowed the machine down. And it slowed it down to almost 20 times slower in certain modes than a standard BBC Micro. Compared to the BBC though, this Acorn Electron was quite basic with only one expansion port at the back of the machine. But fortunately Acorn released a plus one expansion kit offering two ROM cartridge slots and a parallel Centronics interface and it also included a joystick connector. The built-in Acorn Electron Basic was a derivative of the famous BBC Basic but all in all the version of Basic that was on the machine was still an impressive feat and it was still one of the best versions of Basic available on any micro. But the graphics capabilities of this machine weren't bad at all. In fact they were quite impressive. It had a text mode of up to 80 columns, a high resolution of 640 by 256 pixels with two colours. The ULA was the chip that enabled the electron to do these modes and handled the sound because the ULA itself handled the graphics, the video display and the I.O. communications on this machine. The mechanical keyboard was very very good. It was again, it was kind of in the same mould as the brilliant BBC micro computer keyboard. It was one of the nicest feeling keyboards of any micro. But despite being more powerful than the ZX Spectrum, the Acorn Electron didn't sell well. Although towards the end of its life it was consistently in the top end of the sales charts for micro computers of the time. Now this machine was a home computer by Acorn Computers. It was born in 1983. It had a full stroke QWERTY keyboard, 56 keys, with some basic keyboard commands accessible on the keys themselves. The speed of this machine, which used a MOS 6502A processor, was 1 MHz. It had 32K of RAM, 32K of ROM. The graphics mode started off at 160 by 256, 320 by 256. 640 by 256 with four and two colors respectively. The colors on this machine were eight with eight flashing versions of the same color. The sound was one channel plus one channel of white noise and it had a range of seven octaves. The original price for this machine was £199 in 1983. And to my mind this was one of the few machines that gave a lot of people who were used to the BBC Micro access to a almost identical in programming in basic and feel of an original BBC Micro that they used at school. It was the closest thing you could buy to be compatible with what you were using at school. But unfortunately I think that was the image that slowed the sales of the Acorn Electron down and basically didn't make it a wannabe games machine because it was seen as more of a a BBC Micro Junior at the time. Now this has been 3 Minute Retro, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll subscribe. Thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.